our team show for the quarter final of the Show Cup Challenge Cup. Leeds come out to a raucous round of applause. Witness come out to a rapturous standing ovation. Never heard noise like this here at the Auto Quest. It is a stadium which generates atmosphere even when there's only two or three thousand people in. Doesn't look quite full at the moment, but uh, estimated that they're expecting about 7,000 to 7,200 here this afternoon, and it should be a fantastic atmosphere. We'll just go over the teams at the moment. I'll do the witness teams. So we've got Phil Daly from Leeds here, and I'll hand you over to him for the Leeds team. Full back for witness Jim Salisbury. The backs James Blairs, Dean Cross, Danny Myler, Damian Monroe, half back. Paul Manson and Mark Hewitt and the witness pack, Lee Hansen, Phil Cantalon, George Mann, Paul Harris and Lakini Severio, Jimmy Cassidy and number 13 after the late fitness test. On the interchange bench for witness, Fabian Davici, Terry Reid and Jason Hunter, Steve Argent at number 17. Well this is Phil Daly here and welcome to what is looking like going to be a very interesting encounter between the Premiership Witness Vikings and Super League Leeds Rhinos and the Rhinos team at number one is Captain Yeshin Harris and it's Leroy Reed, Marvin Golden in for Ricky Blackmore, Brad Golden and Francis Cummins and the halfbacks are Darrell Powell and Ryan Sheridan. Ryan Sheridan of course has been man of the match on the two occasions in the Challenge Cup so far. The pack for the Rhinos is Fleary, Jackson Starter Hooker, McDermott, Hay, Newton in the second row role and at least forward Mark Glanville and the bench of the Rhinos. Jamie Matthew, Martin Michella, Paul Sterling and Kevin Sinfield as Justin Harris gets the game underway and kicks into witness and it's well received by Witness. Well, it was a great kick and a good chase, but good cover by George Mann. He raced over to take that loose ball. It would have been a knock on anyway, but uh, obviously both sides fired up for this lead. Hot favourite now for the Challenge Cup after defeating Wigan and St Helens. Witness, well, it, it's obviously the biggest game of their season, it's the biggest game for the Vikings for many a year in fact the boys are fired up for this one hopefully they can do themselves justice, the ball back to Manson kicks it deep but that will be fielded by Yeston Harris and Harris runs back into the fence, he's got half a gap he's still going and he's just shy of the halfway line, five minutes from halfway Leroy Rivet in the dummy half, he looks to scoot away and he does, just makes it up to halfway, and this is a good start for the Rhinos. Jackson in the dummy half, gives it to Sheridan. Sheridan out to McDermott, he's the man wanting to do impression today. And the ball comes out the back door to Newton. Newton's got Hay outside and tries to go himself. And he goes back inside to Granville. Granville out to Hay. Hay finds Godden. Godden can't quite take it in. And he's tackled. And this is a great start for the Rhinos still. And the important thing was that the first quarter of an hour, Leeds took things steady. The defence looked solid in the first set of six. The attack showed the willingness to get the ball out of the tackle. Brad Godden there just couldn't hold on to it. Encouraging signs to fit the way Leeds got the ball out of the tackle. But Godden, referee Steve Gregory, judging that it went forward. So Wigner will get heading field at this scrum. Well, you can see the danger off Leeds already. Yes, and Harris there went round two men. But Manson has done a couple of super tackles so far. And Wigner there tackles and Harry leads into making a mistake and Manson almost opened up a gap for himself by the start by both sides, Damian Munro straight into a big tackle from Flaherty oh George Mann almost got through, it took a last kick tackle from Lee Jackson witness overcrowded on this near side, too many players and uh, the blood bin for Paul Harris it's coming off Blood pouring from his face. Witness just a bit disorganised now at the moment. The Leeds defence moving up very quickly. Now Salisbury, well, Hewitt is inside his own 40. Or was he? It won't find touch anyway. And Francis Cummings picks it up for the Lions. But Harris outside him. Goes himself. We saw last week at Gateshead the risky business of throwing passes inside your own 20. And Francis Cummings makes the safe option. Now Marvin Golden. He'll be looking to impress. He's in for the injured Richie Blackmore. And he'll be looking to have big games. He played well at Gateshead last week in bad conditions. This is Mark Lambert. He takes it up over the 30. The players both looking at the referee. Now they look over again. Newton in the second row role. And he's playing like his good friend Adrian Morley as he powers into the tackles and pushes men off. 
Now is Lee Jackson. Lee Jackson's screwing up the field. He gets the offload to Dale Powell. Dale Powell that makes it over the 40. This is good stuff for the Rhinos. Always putting pressure on the Windmill Vikings. Now Sheridan finds Harris. Harris puts the little bomb up. It's going to land on the 10 somewhat, but it's well defused by Windmill. Good catch by Jim Soldsley. Good work by James Dyer to, to uh, act as a blocker. But the speed of the Leeds Rhinos team is devastating here. They're getting the ball out in the tackles, and there's always a man in support. Witness can learn a lot from that. My guess is that by half time, the Witness players' lungs will be on fire and they'll be gasping for breath. They're tackling superbly at the moment, but you can just see Leeds getting the ball out of tackles. Oh, well held by Sons, but he couldn't get the ball out. James Dreyer. Bouncing his chances there, it's the last one for Witness. Hewitt, the kick drives down, it's still the final tackle. No, it's back to one because it was a charge down. Mr. Presley signals back to one. So Witness gets six more, but they just can't get past that 10 metres from the halfway line. Cassidy, big game for him, although he's played in bigger games than this. Remember the semi-final against St. Helens? At Wigan. That's a great break by Phil Cantillon. Cassidy, George Mann, good hands to Myra. Into a wall of defenders though. Hanson and Manners. Don't forget, Witness have got some experienced players out there. Hanson and Mann have both had experience of playing big game football. It's the final one for the Vikings. Manson himself is a big game player as well. Witness trying to keep the ball alive. But Jason Hunter is on for the injured Paul Harris, caught in possession. Marvin Golden, like an excellent missile there, finding his man. And this is Leroy Riven, who's taken it up over the halfway line. Great defence from the Rhinos there, even though they had two sets of six against them, they had no worries, they just kept their form and kept the tackles coming in. Good stuff, and this is Andy Hay producing the goods now. And now Jackson sees Granville. Granville out to his good friend Godden, who takes it up. He's busting off the men and makes it up to the 30. Brad Goddard never saves guy in the tackle. This is Sheridan. Sheridan feeds Fleary. Fleary looking to create a hole. Of course, he played here for Emerging England last summer at the Autoquest Stadium. The ball seems to have ripped out there. Steve Presley looks to touch one, but it's been knocked on. Knocked on by Fleary in the tackle. And that means Witness will get the head and feed here. Well, it's a great start by Witness in defence. Leeds obviously making a better attacking start. But the fans are attempting to get behind the Vikings all week. In fact, for the last two weeks since the draw was made, people have been saying, well, you never know, anything can happen. Well, I think it's a big ask of witness here. But they certainly up to now are doing themselves justice. But Leeds are just man for man, pounds bigger than the Vikings. That's what they do for a living. Witness players have had to take work. Uh, time off work during the last week or so to do preparation and even things like television interviews for these players that is their work but witness coming forward strong Hewitt Cassidy Dummy straightens up but he can't find a gap this time and Manson finds himself at half back fans not happy we were Mr Presley's taking the lead Line, but that's a good kick by Hewitt, just gives witness some breathing space. And still the Rhinos press the Vikings and not giving them any space or time. And this is just what Graham Murray will have wanted from the lads to the captain. Yeah, certainly the difference between the teams at the moment seems to be in upper body strength. You look at the likes of uh, Lee Jackson, you look at Terry Newton, the bust that he's made at the moment, Mark Glanville. And in the tackling department, certainly Leeds have got the power. Uh, on attack, they're looking to spread the ball wide. The pitch conditions favour them today, unlike at Gateshead. And uh, I would imagine there'll be some sparkling rugby as the, the game wears on. The opening eight or nine minutes is exactly as you would have expected it. And there's the first penalty. And it's for both sides that uh, that is the first penalty of the day. Both teams wanting to play attacking rugby, wanting to get on with the game. And uh, that may cost witness the late stage of the game because the Rhinos know how to play at this high Super League tempo. This is Big Barry Mack. He drives it up to the 30. Good work by the uh, old and born player. Now, this is Sheridan. Sheridan feeds Fleary. Fleary taking it up. And he gets a warm reception from the witness pack. 
as they're in the close attendance to the tackle. This is Powell. Powell looking for runners. Finds Hay on the inside run. Hay still going. Looking for runners with him, but there was no one there to take it off him. Newton feeds Sheridan. Sheridan finds McPowell. Powell. Powell driving it up. He's five metres to the line. Now Jackson. Jackson in at dummy half. This is the uh, options that the Rhinos have. Newton or Jackson in at dummy half. This is Sheridan. Sheridan couldn't keep hold of the ball. He locks it on. Salisbury collects in the end goal area but that's uh, good defence from the winners Vikings are on the mark there well you would have put money on Sheridan to go over the line there but a great tackle by Mark Hewitt and the ball went loose and you can't fault the defensive effort by the Vikings at the moment Chris Musket with me of course as usual Chris it's a big job for the Vikings this yeah uh, even in this opening 10 minutes Gary you can just see the, um, the ferocity of the league players it's a lot stronger than bigger but at the moment, winning some action in man to man. Certainly, and I don't think anybody uh, could have asked more of witness in the opening 10 minutes of this game. Hansen. Good but great things by Cantalon. He steps as well. That's good work by Phil Cantalon. Hewitt. George Mann. Well, Harris back on for Hunter, final one for the Vikings and this time George Mann just scuffs the halfway line as the ball goes into touch and it will be a scrum on that 20 metre mark again good defence from the Rhinos, they're up very quick on this Widnes attacking line and it just proves there, Brad Godden very sharp to what was going on there and the kick didn't find any sort of uh, yardage at all Rhinos get heading the speed on the halfway line and this will be where they'll be looking at the run when they set moves. It was one of the trademarks last season, the moves from the base of the scrum. And I'm sure they have trained up their sleeves now as Powell hits the line, looking for runners. Harris was there, but he takes it now from dummy half, dummies, and goes himself. And finds Newton. Newton on the crush ball. Good work from Terry Newton there. And they come all the way around from the base of the scrum to collect that ball. Now, this is Fleary. Fleary always looking dangerous in the middle of the field. He's doing a lot of hard work out there today. Martin Marcella starts on the bench. And so Fleary has to do the hard work that Michelle normally does. But there's big Barry Mack, and he'll never shirk the work. Now it's Sheridan. Sheridan looking for a gap. Finds the ball out wide to Glamrod, but it didn't go to hand. And it's collected by Witness. Well, he's certainly making a gap, but you've got to give the Vikings credit because it's the last ditch effort here. The crowd unhappy because the league player technically offside position, although unintentionally. Um, cut off a potential pass. I think that's what the fans are upset about. Still whinging it. It's a pleasure to get them on side. But that's one aspect of, of the game that perhaps will never change, no matter what other things come into force. Harris put down by Flaherty. Don't forget Lewis, by the way, without Richie Blackmore, Adrian Morley, Marcus St. Hilaire, and Anthony Farrell today. In a sense, perhaps a weakened lead team, so you can't tell that by looking at it. The Vikings get their first penalty, and Harris again goes off for the blood bin. This isn't looking good, it's the second time. I can't make out where exactly the cut is on Harris, but it may be that he, uh, well, on the, it may be that he'll have to do what I remember David Hume doing in the Premiership final once and lying down and having it stitched, pick side. Hansen, Lee Hansen, I think is one player who will lift his game to his full potential. He's put in some good games for Vikings this season, but I don't think he's quite played to his full potential. But I think this atmosphere and the importance of this big game will just get that extra 10% out of him. All unlucky Manson and Myler, a misunderstanding there, and the ball goes astray and Lee take possession again. Good take by Francis Cummings there earlier now Harris takes it up up to the 30 metre line and the ball seems to be ripped out there but Presley says no and Witness have got it fair and square but Jackson wasn't square at the play of the ball and it's a penalty to Witness well I can't understand the, the tackle was made Leeds maybe uh, just attempting to get too many balls out here it was a pass that was never done and it was split back by the Witness player I think it was Cassidy who knocked it back and then the penalty coming from that. But again, maybe Leeds just trying a bit too much there, Chris. 
Yeah, had a, a bit of overconfidence by Luke that he um, just tries to get that extra pass out. Uh, at the moment, Witness are doing well. Susan Downing in the lead zone half. Uh, just two points is a good, um, good break for the, the forwards, especially now they're all getting the water in the air to fly on. So here it, but in, at the moment, an important kick because it will put Witness 2 0 up against. On paper, on uh, current results anyway, the best team that in England. Well, I don't know, uh, there's a bit of belly dancing going on out there. I don't know if that's part of the Super League training regime, but it doesn't put Mark Hewitt off. And the Vikings take a 2 0 lead. And uh, I don't know if Phil Derry told you, you've maybe a bit of overconfidence by Leeds. They're trying to get one pass out too many to lose possession. Certainly has to do the basics right. And uh, it really has lifted the home crowd here. They've seen Windless take a 2-0 lead. And if anything, that should focus the Rhinos' minds now. They should really, so they have got a job. They have to play to the same stand they would do week in, week out in Super League. Windless will get the ball again. They'll be full of confidence wanting to come back at the Rhinos. Awkward bounce on the kick, but eventually it sets up for Jason Hunter. Credit to Witness, though, because they have uh, forced mistakes out of Leeds three or four times now. The Rhinos have lost possession. Cassidy, big George Mann, Mann dummies. Nothing there this time. Jason Hunter was outside him. Here it wants forwards to take this ball in. Hansen will have a go. It's, sorry, that's not Hansen, it's Cavillio. He was looking to get the ball out. Last tackle. Back to Hewitt. Dummies. Witness are going to be caught in possession. Well, that's not where you want to turn the ball over. But uh, you've got to give that down to Leeds. Defence coming up so quickly. Brad Goddard is having a storming game on defence and this is Barry McDermott charging his way through. He makes up to a 30 for the Rhinos, Jackson in the dummy half finds Sheridan. Sheridan out to Newton, Newton spins to the tackle, he'll be looking to offload here if he can, but the tackle's made good and sound. Jackson pleading with Quesley to get the players off so he can get the ball away. This is Sheridan, Sheridan has Harris outside and Harris comes inside looking for runners, no one's looking on, no one it. And this finds Cummings off the ground, Cummings has got Goddard leaping outside him. But decides to take the tackle, safety first, early in the tackle count. This is McDermott, McDermott looking for runners, finds Hay on the sweep around. No real urgency in the Rhinos attack, no one wants to take the ball out, they're not desperate for it yet. And they'll out have to change, Powell drives it up, five metres short. He's looking to offload, it's the last tackle now, what options will the Rhinos have? Jackson's in at dummy half, they go left, Harris looking for runners, he finds Hay, but Hay's well telegraphed and he's got the ball. Tracy looking to nine judges and he gives a try the ball seems to have been spilled but he was in good position Presley and Andy Hay gets a try same as he did last year for Emerging England at the Order Quest Stadium the first try goes to Andy Hay and uh, that'll be a good one for the Rhinos to settle them down Phil I think it just shows what, what happens if you respect possession that was only the second time that Leeds have played out their set of six far too early in the tackle count they've been losing possession trying to throw passes that weren't really on that's what caused the penalty down at the other end that time, Jesse Harris had looked for runners, they hadn't been forthcoming, so he held the ball up. Uh, the man coming in support was Andy Hay, too big, too strong, brushed off the witness tacklers, just plonked the ball down on the line, no dramatics, referee pressure right on the spot, had no hesitation in awarding the try. Uh, some of the witness forwards blowing a little bit, they're not used to the pace of the game. Uh, it looks like the first try could settle leads down, Harris now going for the conversion. And Harris is in great kicking form, slots this one over and that gives the Rhinos a 6-2 lead and for Witness, the fact that they couldn't get the ball away and that last tackle there has cost them dear. Yes, it, it comes down to the elite defence coming up so quickly but it's, it is a big mistake by the Vikings. Manson just couldn't get the kick away, maybe the kicker needs to stand a touch deeper. Uh, they're obviously not used to defences coming up this quickly and hopefully they can adjust that as the game goes on. But uh, it was a great try by Andy Hay. Still witness defence had worked hard, but you can't stop that power from 10 metres out. And for now, Witness will kick the ball back to Leeds. 
This will be an important set of six. This will prove whether it has settled them down. It's a low, well, hard hit kick. And Vivek lets it go. And he's let it go in touch so after touching it. It was bobbling and bouncing. It was a horrible ball to take. Even though the pitch was in good condition, it was bouncing all over the place. And Lewitt just couldn't judge it. And uh, as we were saying, it was important for Leeds to have a good set of six to make sure they have settled into the game. They'll have to hand back possession to the witness Vikings. Well, that was a great kick. And uh, the Tannoy players, come on, come on, just <laughs> get behind the crowd. But I don't think these players need reminding to come on, come on, because uh, witness at the moment are doing as much as anyone could ask of them. They've got a chance now to attack Leeds in their own half. Six tackles to get as close to the Leeds line as possible. And Hansen, so far, is having a storming game. Cassidy gets the ball out wide. Manson throws the ball. Oh, a great tackle. Salisbury, Cassidy. He's looking in the middle, always searching Jimmy Cassidy, but there was nothing there then except, unfortunately, the big bulk of Flaherty. The final one, tip over the top. Well, Myra chases it, but, uh, I mean, yes, in Harris, uh, the fullback, Great Britain fullback, one of the best fullbacks that the British game has uh, produced, and I don't think he's going to be too upset by those little kicks over the top. I'd put the ball on the floor for those myself. In the offside. Leaves it right, let's get the penalty and they come out now with Fleary. Good charging from the prop. Here's the other one, they, they work in tandem to the props here at, at Headingley. And it's McDermott to now Jackson. Jackson finds Granville. He's in his final season of his career and he'll be wanting to get to Wembley more than most. Jackson feeds Sheridan. Sheridan scooting across the line, looking for a half break. But the tackle's put in well there by Cervillio. This is Jackson, Jackson finds Newton, Newton out to, out to Golden, Golden out the back door to Rivet, Rivet still going, he's got Newton outside him, he goes again, he puts the high ball into Newton, Newton can't take it, and it's well selected by Manson there, and no panicking by Winnick, good defence. Yes, that was a brilliant tackle by Salisbury, and like you say, no panicking, that's nice to see. He showed him the outside, weighed things up, and forced the attacker to throw the ball wild back into the field of play. And thankfully, for the witness fans that came to Manson. But, uh, well, uh, witness obviously raised themselves. We've had 22 minutes now, and it's 6-2. This is clearly the best that the Vikings have played this season. The worry is, of course, that this uh, big game may take it out of the players for two or three weeks to follow, and that could affect the league form. But if they can play like this every week, then there's no reason why they couldn't be champions. Rivet bats up one tackle, he could go all the way here! And he's just got his... Oh, Phil Cantillon, his former teammate from Leeds, puts the tackle in. It's a wonderful cover tackle for Cantillon, but a great run from Rivet to set the space up. Now this is Fleary in the middle of the field, rising up. And it's a high tackle on Fleary. The only way they could bring him down was to do it illegally. And the Rhinos have a penalty right in front of the post. Interesting to see what they do here. Harris is coming in, he's... Speak it to Jackson, and it's a quick one. Harris puts it out wide to Granville. Granville's got men outside him. He's got Godden goes outside to Cummins. Cummins plays it back inside, and Godden tries to collect it. Granville just flicks it to Hay. Hay can't take it. This is basketball stuff from the Rhinos. Hay will settle it down here. He makes it up to the 20. They regroup some of the ground they lost there. Jackson out to Powell. Powell's got Newton outside him. He finds Newton. Newton spins with a tackle, looking to offload. He finds Jackson again. Jackson looking upload again, finds Newton, it's a, they're working in tandem, the two hookers from Leeds, they, the ball looked to be ripped out, but he says that it was knocked on, does the referee Steve Presley, and the wind is like he's going away again. Oh, brilliant defence, it was uh, enterprising stuff by Leeds to go for the, the tap instead of the penalty kick, which obviously witness were expecting, but it was great defence, a fantastic tackle by James Dyer's out here, but then things went well for Leeds, even though witness was forcing them backwards, they still kept possession, but again, top defence, wins possession, it was a good one-on-one -on -one steal. Yeah, witness just needs to um, keep the ball in the tackles, try and stop the Leeds defence uh, offloading all the tackles, because it just takes tackle after tackle all the time. 
Well, Manson, I think, hoping that Cummings would lose possession there, but he does well. The Rhinos top try scorer last season, Cummings, a good run from him. This is Marvin Golden, takes it up to the 40. Jackson in at dummy half, he's got Rivet outside him, it comes back inside to McDermott. The crowd are baying for blood for a forward pass, but Steve Presley wants none of it. This is Fleary, feeding off McDermott, finds Harris. Harris has got Danville inside him, he finds Hayes. Hayes to the line, but it's a forward pass. Steve Presley called up very late. He's getting the forward pass, it'll be head and feed to win this, and just as the Rhinos were looking like they would get, had the witness on the back foot, Phil. Yeah, I think uh, Leeds need to show Woodners more respect. They've shown from their defensive contribution that they are worthy opponents, and really Leeds should have taken the two points that were on offer earlier. The book to the try scoring champs, and I think Graham Murray would be saying, just get back to basics, play out your sets of six, you don't have to score tries on uh, every possession. Well, I don't think the final pass there by Harris is forward, but the fans did shout for one earlier on. I wonder if Mr. Presley was uh, doing a bit of making up for mistakes there. But the witness will gratefully accept that, no matter what. Witness fans still not happy that the Leeds players are standing offside at the play of the ball. Stewart, Harris back on. Cancel on again, makes good ground from the half-back. Witness just short of the halfway line. Hansen wants a quick play of the ball. Well, oh, he's given a knock-on. Uh, well, it definitely wasn't a knock-on. I think Hansen was uh, playing for the penalty there. He, he threw the ball at uh, Barry McDermott, who was on the floor, and didn't move out of the way, but it, it wasn't a knock-on anyway. Some uh, very strange decisions <laughs> taking place in the game. This uh, spelling the game, Mr. Presley needs to uh, get control of it now. This is Harris. Finds Godden. Godden spins out of the tackle, as is his trademark. But he's eventually brought down. Harris in the dummy half finds Granville. Granville's got Jackson outside him. And it's Jackson now who goes in the dummy half, finds Hay. Hay got Fleary outside if he chooses to use him. He does it. He just takes it up. And as Phil Kaplan was saying, Leeds going back to basics and making sure they going, grind out the set to six. This is Newton. Newton looked like he ducked under the tackle, but he was brought down by Dean Cross. Sheridan, Sheridan finds Powell. Powell out to Fleary. He takes it up over the 10. He's eight metres out from his own line. It's the last tackle. What options does Jackson bring here? He finds Harris. Harris maybe a little grubber. No, it's Hay. Hay finds Godden. He was straightly tackled, but Godden skips out of one tackle and scores the try. And it's as simple as that. He bounced out of one tackle. The tackle wasn't made. And really, that's fundamental basics to win this. They played so well on defence. They really haven't kept their composure. But he didn't put the tackle in there. Got him bounced out and he scored the try, Phil. Yeah, perfect set of six. Just what we were saying, Leeds control the ball, respect possession. There were no silly passes. They went 50 yards there in a set of six. And on the last tackle, there wasn't anybody really crashing onto the ball, but Hayes Power took him past the first tackle. He found Godden, and even near the line, he couldn't be stopped, twisted out of the despairing clutches of a witness defence that has been heroic, but unfortunately started to look a little bit tired. Yes, it seems to have him covered, and they've done all the hard work, but I think, once again, it's just the sheer power of the Super League players, and witness obviously not used to it. These Leeds guys are playing at this level every week, week in and week out. And uh, Danny Myler just couldn't keep hold. And after all the hard work, Leeds again go further ahead. And so it's another low, bouncing kickoff. It worked last time. It's fair to say he can try it again. But Rivet corrects it this time and takes it up to the 20. And Michelle is on for the Rhinos, on for Fleary. And so Graham Murray spelling his forwards. Usually that would be the other way around, the seller coming off, but he's, he's on now, the Tongan, and it's Hay, Hay inside to Powell. The two, number 13s on the park, tussling away there. Jackson calming things down. He finds McDermott, McDermott takes it up, but witness offside, says referee Steve Presley, and as you can expect, the home fans, not in total agreement with the referee there. To say the very least, Jackson now finds McDermott. McDermott carries on where he left off, 30 metres up the field. And he's eventually brought down 18 metres out on the left-hand side of the field. Jackson finds Sheridan. Sheridan out to Marcella, just on the park. He spins out of one tackle. 
and it's eventually brought down. Jackson looking for Glanville but finds Hay. Andy Hay, what an impact he's had in this game so far. Adrian Mori out injured, but they haven't missed him in the last two games. Andy Hayes picks up the work line. This is Powell. Powell out to Newton. Finds Golden, but Golden is drift into Leroy Rivet's face. Still not tackled. Finds Newton. Newton, will he scoot to the line? Double movement there from Terry Newton. Would have been wiser to take the tackle and win this. Will be given the ball on their own line, and that's a reprieve for them. Well, it certainly is, and a general last-ditch tackle. It's never say die so far. But on the Vikings, you wonder how long they can keep this up. It's 10 minutes to go till half time. And, uh, well, we can, I think maybe, in all honesty, we can expect the fitness of the Leeds team to tell even more in the second half. But again, we saw Leeds get the ball out of the tackle. That is the, the crucial thing that decides the power. It's the ability to keep the ball alive, and there's always a support player. And no matter what the final score here is, Witness, hopefully, will learn from this experience. The Witness fans still shouting for Leeds to get on side. I think that's why they felt uh, aggrieved at that earlier penalty for offside. Severely over, he took that ball, standing still, and the Witness players, I think, now the pace beginning to tell, but that was good hands. Myler throws the ball, good quick hands. It was a great take and catch by Salisbury. Well, just when I said witness were looking tired, they've suddenly come to life. Kick for the corner. Touch finder. Good work by Manson. And suddenly, as witness looked dead on the feet for the last few minutes, they came to life. As the Rhinos get the head and feed here, Sheridan sees Powell. Powell's got Harris running inside him. But it just crabs across the field. So a real yard is made there, Harris. He shoots from Dunny Half, looking for runners, he finds Hay. Andy Hay always available for the pass. And he gives the pass out to Jackson. Jackson finds Golden. If he can bust the line, he could go. But he's brought down Hanson in close attendance there. Now this is Jackson. Jackson feeds it out of Masella. Masella, who's just taken up, that's his game, making the hard yardage for the Rhinos. Now Jackson out to Sheridan. Sheridan, this move with McDermott, finds Granville, Granville. Tackle well though, this is good work from Witness. They may be tiring, but the effort isn't dropping off in the slightest. Powell makes it up to the 30 metre line. This is gone, it's the last tackle for the Rhino. Sheridan finds Harris, what will Harris do here? To bomb over into the corner, Rivet chasing. And it's well taken there. Good play by Breers. And it's good defensive efforts from Witness. Certainly, I'm just saying here to Chris Musket, if Witness and now I think are playing to the, to the full potential. This is what the Vikings are capable of. And if they can match this effort every week, then I think we will see something happen here at the Autocrest Stadium. That was good work by Dean Cross to uh, do a bit of shepherding for that high ball. The ball goes loose. A high tackle on Phil Cantillon by Masella. And the Cantillon looks to be hurt down there. Bodies come on all over the place. There's water flying about now for the Vikings. I think there'll be uh, seven minutes now to half time. I think Witness will be glad to get in at half time, have a bit of a breather, and hopefully come out with the same attitude in the second half. Yeah, it's an uh, exceptional play by Witness uh, to keep Leeds down to 10 2. Uh, hopefully, it'll be just for half time. But uh, Witness <coughs> would love to score. Again, before half time, but it's just the difficulty of breaking this Lee's line. Now, there's Lee Hansen spinning in the tackle. Didn't make too much ground that time, but Witness now looking to get the ball wide. George Mann straightens up. Severely always taking on the Lee's defence, and he makes good ground. Well, offside, I think that's one of the few times when the witness fans didn't appeal for offside and uh, Mr. Presley oh gives a decision <laughs> he ain't nothing but a hound dog and uh, Hewitt is going to go for the two points well why not because that would put witness back within a six pointer and I think uh, if you'd said 10-4 at half time there wouldn't be too many witness fans who would upset with that half-time scoreline, although the players 
I'm sure convinced that they can win this one. It's the only way to go out there with that conviction. Certainly outlived, I think, anybody's expectations this performance by witness up to now. But again, this is the belief that the Vikings fans have held in this team for the last three years that they could play to this potential and now Witness may finally have the team to live up to that substitution being made Jamie Matteo is coming on and Barry McDermott goes off Hewitt is 12 metres off the touchline 20 metres out and it sails over and Witness are back in with a shout at the fill. I think uh, even Leeds must be a little bit surprised by this scoreline at the moment. Yeah, and we mentioned in the commentary that Leeds have to respect possession. It's just be the same as they'll play next Friday night against Wigan. It, it's the same practices and they have to make sure they do keep their minds on the game. Witness are a fired up team, they're at home in the cup. They've got nothing to lose in this game and they're putting a wholehearted effort in. And the Leeds Rhinos must make sure they do put the pressure on and do put the points in it and get what is going to happen eventually. Make sure that it does happen because it won't happen by accident. That was a brilliant take there by Jimmy Cassidy. He, I think he went there as a blocker initially but realised he had to take the catch. Well, witness working hard. Play on says Mr. Presley, working hard to find gaps in this Leeds defence. I'm sure more experienced teams than Witness will find that difficult this season, but Cassidy makes a gap there for Harris. And Jimmy Cassidy's just getting more and more involved as this game goes on. And that kick, fine touch, great kick by Cassidy, absolutely playing out of his skin at the moment. Good kick there for Witness, and it does put the pressure on the Rhinos. They'll have him feed in their own 10. And this will be an ideal position for them to work this set of six. We're now just coming up to the half-time hooter. They'll want to go in maybe with another score on the board. 10-4 half-time will certainly give Witness a boost. They may be flagging in that dressing room. But when you look at the scoreline and know you're only one score behind, it will give them a boost. And that's something the Rhinos have to make sure doesn't happen. So this is their captain, Yeston Harris. He takes it up and he's still going. Bounce out one, tackle out of two. And he's eventually hauled to the ground by Manson. Jackson in at dummy half finds Granville. Granville crosses D, 20, makes it up to a 30. Good work from the former Newcastle Knight. And there's another former Knight, Jackson, who feeds Matthew. Matthew, he takes it up. He's just on the field for the Germans. Jamie Matthew, such an impact player when he does come all off the bench of the Rhinos. And Masella, he takes it up to the halfway line. The Tongan tank charges it upfield. This is Jackson again to Newton. Newton playing in the second row, takes it up to the 40. Jackson again, looking for options. It's the last tackle. He finds Harris. Harris, a little kick through. Still going is Harris. Another little soccer skill style kick. And Newton puts the tackle in. Went slightly high, but the ball went backwards and Witness have it. Well, our hearts in the mouth times there for Witness. Damian Munro fumbled the ball. Scrolls, but he fortunately picked it up. But Harris again showing the danger man that he can be. One and a half minutes to go and uh, well maybe Witness would be best to keep safety first. Say as Manson throws a long ball out. But uh, I can imagine the reactions at the grounds and stadiums around the northwest of England and London if this scoreline stays to half time and it's announced to the crowds around England 10-4 for Leeds I think people will be shocked certainly wasn't the expected scoreline some bookmakers giving witness a 32 point start earlier today this is Jackson, he feeds it out to Granville Granville's got Hay outside him just takes his time, settles it down finds Sheridan, Sheridan looking for runners takes it up himself Certainly looking busy Ryan Sheridan in this game as he has done all season. This is Harris. Harris spins in the tackle. 
The Claws man didn't put the tackle in though, and he's still going, he's Harry. He's eventually brought down. And he's with his players in the way, but Jackson gets it away to Sheridan. Sheridan finds Newton. Steve Tracy was well on hand to see where that wet pass went backwards. He didn't give it. And now he's given a penalty against Leeds. Terry Newton pulling the shirt, playing for the penalty and saying, Lee, you don't need to do that, you just need to play the game out and play their set to six and time will tell. Well, I think the longer the witness can keep this scoreline, we're now in stoppage time, by the way, in the first half and if witness can come out and maintain this effort in the second half, I think Leeds will become frustrated and things like that will happen more and more. But it's been an impressive performance. Leeds came out with all guns firing. The witness defence, though, has been exceptional. Just two tries from close range by Leeds. Really, the witness could do nothing about due to the power of the players involved, Godden and Hay. But this Vikings team can be proud of itself so far with this first half performance trying everything also to find a gap in the league's defence the short balls to break it down so it is the half time Peter and Witness get a stand innovation as they go off at 10-4 down haven't managed yet to score a try just two conversions from Hewitt Hay and Godden the only try scorers but uh, who knows can Witness keep this up in the second half Phil I think Leeds will have some hard talking to do at half time they certainly will do, and that ovation the Witness Vikings are getting as they go off the field will give them a massive boost in the dressing sheds when they may be flagging their spirits may be down as far as fitness is concerned but they'll come out fired up for that second half the Rhinos have to take a long hard look at themselves and start showing their class in this second half that will tell they have the class in abundance but they've got to put it in the gear and make sure it works join us for the second half So, Witness looking to get the second half underway. They trailed 10 points to four, but uh, certainly the reception they got when they came back out for the second half was electric as Salisbury kicks off again. Sheridan controls it with his foot, then finds Newton. Newton drives it up to the 20. George Mann was there first of all to put the tackle in, but it's Cantor on who gets the, the final tackle in. This is Granville. Granville driving at them. This is what Leeds need. They need a big, powerful set of six just to remind witness who they are and where they've come from. This is Masella. He takes it just shy of the 40. Jackson in quickly at dummy half finds Matthew. Matthew just nearly overrun but took it perfectly in the end and he makes it up to the halfway line. And Jackson finds Newton. Newton drives it up. And this is the final tackle. The Rhinos just shy of the witness 40. Harris puts the little kick into the corner. Witness are chasing back, and that's a lovely kick from Harris. Really pens Witness back, and now the Rhinos will have to put in a big defensive set of six. Keep Witness down here, hopefully force a mistake, and to get the upper hand quickly in this second half. And we see that Paul Sterling is on for the Rhinos, on for Francis Cummings. Not quite sure. Cummings is moving to the centre. You can just see, and it's Powell that's gone off. So it uh, looks like Cummings has moved up to a full back. And Harris, I presume, has moved in to stand off. Well, while the Ruffles, the Rhinos shuffle their pack, Witness go about their job and they're driving it up now. Yeah, I thought uh, they might move Harris up to the stand off just to give a bit more penetration against this tight Witness defence, which I think has taken Leeds by surprise this afternoon. Man, well, he spins away and bounces off, but the support had all gone past him. It's all to no avail. Manson with the kick, but Leeds offside. And so Witness will hopefully make some easy meters here. But uh, I think the danger signs are there now with Harris at standoff. I think this will be a different kettle of fish. I wondered exactly how they'd go about that with Marcus St. Hilaire not being on the bench. The usual swap over. But uh, it could be dangerous for Witness. Yeah, this is what we need, Gary. A, a good set of six now uh, and get the confidence up. And just show uh, the league players just exactly what Witness can do. 
what they do need to do is find some way of breaking the Leeds line and the Leeds haven't yet had to chase the witness players the short balls have nearly done that on a few occasions but not quite and uh, of course without doing that there's no way of scoring Cassidy nice attempt but uh, Sheridan saw what was happening there stood his ground covered the gap Danny Munro has a goal well drop goal up and under it's an up and under the chase is on he's lost it oh Cantillon knocks on as well first knock on well wow, that was so close and witness could have leveled the scores there if Phil Cantillon had been able to keep hold of that one ball it was a good kick and a good chase and uh, Chris I think that would have been beyond our wildest dreams there oh, that would have been the icing on the cake that carry absolutely brilliant um, just unfortunately the winner's play couldn't get it down without knocking on yeah, so, so cancel on by surprise blind side move Cassidy Monroe comes in and the Vikings have scored a simple blind side move witness have scored the first try in the second half sensational is trying to event here at the Arthur Quest Stadium it's still early days and being the eternal pessimist that I am these days I still think that Leeds power will tell eventually but it was a good blindside move there Jimmy Cassidy came out and Damian Monroe barged his way over now a difficult kick here for Hewitt but he could tie the scores just a simple but effective move from the back there Cassidy picking out the witness winger and uh, hopefully now this can level the scores well the Arthur Quest Stadium has never witnessed scenes like this the last time we saw anything like this of course witness played at Norton Park but this is just unbelievable and it's great that finally after years of patience and patient support the witness fans have got something to shout about many of these fans of course uh, weren't here in the darkest days for the Vikings but they've flocked back this season as the results have gone in favour of witness and it's good to see them here and uh, personally as one of the people that has stuck by the Vikings it's a good feeling to have done that and now be witnessing something to shout about at last no matter what the final score witness have done themselves justice and it's 10 all well Phil uh, I don't think you must have uh, dreamt about this in your worst nightmare Charlie all goes back to the bomb Rivik went up for the ball it wasn't collected Presley Dave head and feet to witness the scrum a simple blindside move well worked Monroe showing that he's played in Super League quality player and he's proved it and now the Rhinos know they have a game on their hands the scoreboard is tied, it's 10 points all Witness will have the ball back in their hands if the Rhinos can't collect this and they must put the tackles in the Rhinos and they must put pressure on the Vikings well there's no way that anybody was going to get to that ball before Jimmy Cassidy but for my money Cassidy at a moment is the man of the match for the Vikings he still only just typifies though the determination in this Vikings outfit at the moment superb, that's the way to explain Jimmy Cassidy everything he does at the moment is turning to gold he's making yards, he's making gaps he's playing out of his skin Gary let's not get carried away of course we're still playing the top Super League team on current form we've heard at half time that Warrington are getting beat by 40 odd points by Bradford and it just makes you perhaps wish that we got Warrington in the draw but who knows well I've criticised people before today for saying anything can happen in rugby league but I'm starting to become convinced myself but I still in my heart of hearts think that Leeds power will tell at the end but it's a moment of glory for the Vikings and who can say they don't deserve it and the speaker system's been cranked up another notch here at Witness they're really getting the fans going they've got something to cheer about and they're 
players will have lads to come on and play well. The Rhinos have to carry that on the field. They have to put the pressure on. They have to get some scores on the board. And this is Brad Godden. How often last season he was the man that fired the Rhinos. Jackson finds Golden. Golden skips out of one tackle and takes it up. There seems to be an extra step in the witness defence. They seem to be up just as quick as the Rhinos now. Jackson finds Glanville. Glanville out to Matthew. Matthew dummies and goes himself up to the halfway line. Jackson calming things down. He tells Harris to get back. He's got this in control. It's MG Mark Glanville who takes it up just shy of the 40 metre line. Jackson again finds Rosella. Rosella drives it up. Lots of one-off stuff from the Rhinos, but they did well there. They saw the witness. We're offside. They went for it again. Harris, this shows the mark. This is a compliment to witness. Harris is going for the kick. It's 30 metres out, right in front of the post. No real breeze to speak of. And they're taking no chances. Had they taken the two points earlier in the game, then it may have been a different story. That might have meant that witness had started playing catch-up football. As it was, Leeds elected to run that one. But now the right decision, Phil, Harris looking to get the points and give the Rhinos the lead again. Well, that's it, it's a cup tie. You can't get no second chances if you make the wrong decision. Leeds need to uh, push themselves back into the lead, need to exert the authority on the game. Harris taking his time. Studious man when it comes to goal kicking. He's right in front. This will calm nerves if he can put it over. Swings back the leg, straight as a dive. The flags them show that the ball has gone wide of the post. It'll be a dropout. And Leeds will get the ball back. Just just to the left-hand side of the post. Kevin Sinfield is warming up on the bench for the Rhinos. He's coming on. I think it may be Mark Glanville that's coming off. We'll just wait and see. Sinfield. And a mocking PA system here at Witness. Well, that might just be the wrong idea. You don't want to fire the Rhinos up. They're playing well within themselves. And Cummings takes it up. He runs straight over the Witness line. Here we're looking to prove a point. He wants to get back to Emily. He's defeat, tasted defeat twice. And he has to make sure he can get there if he wants to taste victory. And that means winning today. Jackson finds inside to Golden. Golden takes it up. Makes a good 10 metres there. Jackson again finds Sheridan. Sheridan's got Marcella outside him. He misses Marcella for Harris. Harris out to Hay. Hay on the run around. He's tackled well. Still we wait for Sinfield to come on. And it's a penalty, another penalty to Leeds. The ball pushed out there, messing around the play, the ball. By Witness, Harris kicks the touch. The Rhinos want to set a six, and still Sinfield waits on the sidelines. That young man wants an introduction into this game. Can he turn it? Martin Masella drives it on. Jackson finds Sheridan, Sheridan and Matthew outside him. Big Jamie Matthew takes it up, seven metres out from the Witness line. This is Jackson again, he gets it away quickly to Harris. Harris looking for Glanville. No options for Harris, he runs into a hole and he's tackled well by Manson. Now Jackson again finds Sheridan. Sheridan can't take it. Newland collects it, ball went backwards. And well played by Terry Newland, the cool head in drastic situations. Glam uh, Golden rather just takes it up. No real options now, it's the last tackle. What can Lee do? It is Glanville that comes off for Sinfield, but he won't have any part in this as Harris looks to runners. He had to wake an age to that. Kick goes through from Golden. Sterling quickly off the mark, and he crawled the man in a touch. Good chase by Paul Sterling and Brad Godden. And it means Witness will have to kick out, and lots of pressure on Witness now. Yeah, it's a great spell of defence, but they have now got a lot of pressure on them. But, uh, well, I thought that was a knock-on earlier. I think it was off Sheridan. But the two witness players had an opportunity to dive on that ball and didn't take it because I think they expected to be given as a knock-on as well. Well, Jimmy Cassidy's coming off. He suffered medial ligament damage last week. But uh, had painkilling injections. I think that was the plan anyway today. But he, for my money, he's been having a great game. Steve Argent comes on, but leaves now with six more chances to attack. And Witness losing Cassidy, who was having a storming game for them. What part will that play? Now Marcella drives it up to the 20. Good work by the big pop forward. Jackson has Sheridan outside him. He finds out Sheridan. Sheridan and Matthew. Matthew drives it up the middle. He's never scored for Leeds. He's not going to score there either. Jackson, again, quickly in the dummy half, finds Sheridan. Sheridan out to Harris. Sheridan on the run around, finds Newton. Forward pass, maybe was it? 
Dean Percy gestures that it was a forward pass and the ball head and feed to witness and it was so important the Rhinos came away there with some points they haven't done that and witness will breathe a huge sigh of relief they certainly will defending two sets of six tackles and forcing Leeds into mistakes but the witness perhaps need to uh, steady their own ship at the moment and not get carried away with things given away a couple of penalties since equalising which has given Leeds easy yards just need to keep the game steady Harris a good set of sixes needed by Ridness now um, just to steady this form good five tackles up and then a good kick and a good chase that'll do Ridness uh, the world of good that'll. Steve Arden comes on there and takes three players five metres with him what a great experience this is for the young lad he's looking to take his second drive Cantor on makes some yards final one Hewitt kick downfield it bounces awkwardly Hall oh, Cummings juggles with it but takes it in the end Graham Murray Hart will have skipped a beat there as Cummings struggle with the ball but he does take at least tackles Hewitt chasing his own kick puts the tackle in Livick steals the ball from Sinfield he wants to put the ball there and get it over the line so he's putting the pressure on now the other winger Paul Sterling comes quickly in at dummy half what can they do this way Good work by the wingers, they're doing the hard work, they know their team needs to make yardage. Jackson, Sinfield outside him, comes back inside to Hay. Hay to Sterling, Sterling busts the line. Good work by the Wolverhampton born winger. Jackson out to Sterling, Sterling finds Matthew. Matthew's got Harris outside him, but just takes the tackle in the end. This is the final tackle. Jackson finds Harris, Harris has Newton outside him, it's a little kick through. Still, Rivick take it, chase him, but it's well collected there. Newton puts the tackle in. Good chasing by the Rhinos and make sure it wouldn't miss a tent in their own area. It's good work by Munro. He had to keep in field. He went down, anticipated the tackle. James Dryers comes in field. But now it's getting hard for the Vikings. This is where the difference begins to tell because all witness have lost possession they can't get out of their own 20 meter and a crucial loss of possession chance on the outside and still sterling goes he's two meters short of the line good work by kevin simple to set that up if she comes inside him a shell out a shell off of the line just held short pow out to the prop just couldn't make it jackson finds sharon again harris harris to golden outside him harris looks to go himself so often that screening wrong has proved evidence for the Rhinos, but not there now Newton finds Sheridan, Sheridan always available but no runners for him, they're running into him. This is Cummings, Cummings just takes it up, the Rhinos have to settle this down and make sure they have a platform to go from to work the set moves from. Jackson finds Sinfield, Sinfield, Sinfield steps off one, he could go for the line! He may be a young man but that's the old man's head on young man's shoulders there. He bounced off the tackle, the strength of the youngster and may well have scored the try that takes the Rhinos into the semi-final, Phil. Yeah, we were speaking at half-time that this might be a game tailor-made for Kevin Sinfield. Plays in the middle of the park, but he's got the, the, the speed of a back and the strength of a forward. He showed both of them there. And Leeds needed to keep patient and they needed to keep disciplined. They've had a lot of possession at the start of this half. And again, it's just showing that the difference in fitness standards between Super League and Ford Premiership sides Looks like Jimmy Matthew may be going off as a blood bin substitution. Barry McDermott's coming back on. As Harris adds the two points. 16 points to 10, the Rhinos lead then. We're well into this second half now, and a crucial time for the Rhinos to get that score. Witness will have been getting the oxygen in their lungs. It will be really beginning to burn now. The ball back to the Rhinos to come at them again. And this is a crucial time for the Rhinos. They have to make sure they control this game now. But Dermot's back on for Matthew. He'll have a big impact, I'm sure. His big barging runs will zap at the energy within the witness players' legs. And it's a kick across the floor. Obviously a favourite tactic here at the Autoquest Stadium as Newton drives it up. He's been fiery all day, has Newton. He needs to keep his head now. There's no point in any silly at this stage in the game. The Rhinos have to keep their heads, have to keep their discipline. 
Let Witness show that if it's in their game. Now McDermott runs straight at Candelon. And Candelon keeps the tackling well, but he's steady, he had to let him go. Now Jackson goes away. From quick, quick tap the ball at the penalty. Good work from Lee Jackson there. Harris in a dummy half finds Masella. Masella drives it up. Really, this is good stuff, the Rose. This is just what they need to keep it going, to lift the tempo. That's what it's all about, McDermott. We said his power runs would jump at the energy stores, and that's what they're doing now. Jackson finds Sherman, still tackles to spare. Harris has Golden outside of it. Golden runs straight at him. No real options there. Golden's just tackled by two men waiting for Harris. Now Harris goes himself, finds Sherman. Sherman finds Michella. Michella takes it up. Steve Presley has a good look at his touch judge. You see that was a forward pass. He was on the spot himself, decided not to take the option himself. Now Sheridan has men outside him. Hey, quickly outside. Sterling collects. He's got tackles coming in. It is the last tackle. Sinfield, Sinfield needs to bring a little grubber kick through. He does. He's got collected himself. Oh, the youngster. He comes off the bench. Collects his own kick. How good is he, Phil Gaplin? There was a lot of judges saying that he could go all the way in this game. And that's two flashes of genius inside three or four minutes from Kevin Sinfield. There was really nothing on there. Leeds probably did the right thing to spread the ball out to the left on the last tackle. The Witness defence is starting to look a bit tired. Leeds were running them around. There was really nothing on when Paul Sterling beat his man. Came in midfield. It needed a general to decide what to do. And an old head on young shoulders. Sinfield backed himself. A lovely little kick through. Jim Salisbury had come up into the line. So I think end this Witness resistance. And heroic though it's been, uh, Clef will probably tell in the latter stages of this game. behind the post and an intelligent kick through and Sinfield well he's changed the game since he came on and uh, witness now it's all uphill and to Sheridan collects he takes it up himself so powerful he's such a young he's such a small frame Ryan Sheridan he really is a difficult character to take down this is Rivet Rivet runs straight at Cantalon and now Jackson out to Sinfield. He's already got two tries in the bag. He offloads out to Jackson. Jackson looks for Hay. Just couldn't quite get the ball away. I'm sure he would have done in the tackle there if he had another the option. But Harris goes away now. Harris, he's looking. He bats out one tackle. He's looking for options. That option is Sinfield. Sinfield finds Golden. Just could Golden go all the way. The great tackle by Manson there. And this is Jackson. Jackson to Sinfield. Sinfield finds Harris. Harris out to McDermott, McDermott offloads again to Harris, Harris finds Godden, Godden for the line! Brad Godden goes the line but he's saying that it was a forward pass to McDermott, he took an absolute age to decide that did Steve Presley, he looked to his touch judge, he didn't make the decision himself and Brad Godden is denied a try because Steve Presley takes another man's opinion other than himself. Well, I think Mr. Presley thought it was a forward pass. He looked at the touch judge to, instead of making the decision himself. And uh, once he'd let the play go there, then he shouldn't have pulled it back for a forward. But uh, I think he realised the possible injustice if he allowed that try to stand. That's a big hit by Masella on Severio. Severio, of course, the two league experience at Salford, but he's felt that one. He's injured. It's hurt. Hurt his uh, shoulder, I think, severely. Oh, George Mann, Witness trying to give the ball some space on the outside. Witness fans still shouting to get them onside. There's 18 minutes left now. I think you've got to say the game's gone away from the Vikings with those two tries in quick succession. Manson with the kick in. He, if that goes in touch, well... We, was Manson inside the witness 20 metre line? I don't think he was, but he's only a yard outside it, and I still can't understand why he quite often does that. He stands one metre this side of the, that crucial line, kicks it into the opposition half, and fails to get the ball back. If he stood a metre back, he would still find touch, and it would be witness head and feed. And still the witness fans chant on for their team. And fair play to them, they've been in great abundance here today. They've come out to see their team. And long may it continue for the success of witness that these fans do return 
in the Ford uh, Premiership. And now Harris finds Cummins, who's chimed in from fullback. Shout out the back door to Godden. Now can Godden collect that try that he was denied? Oh, a lovely tackle by Manson, just clipped the heels of Godden. He has had a storming game for Widnes today, but likewise Brad Godden for Leeds. He's been everywhere on defence and on attack. He's shown the type of flair that we've come to expect at Headingley. And it's a penalty to Leeds. Well done, Kevin Simpson. He knew exactly what he was doing there. He played for that. Witness, obviously frustrated. They look to a score, but it says 22 points to 10. And they just lay it on at the tackle. And Steve Fraser gives the penalty. The penalty count now, currently riding up. 8-7 in the favour of Leeds. And so very evenly contest between the two sides. Now Jackson takes the ball in, it finds Sheridan, Sheridan out to Harris, Harris has got men outside of that man, Terry Newton, Terry Newton offloads out the back door, misses Hay but finds Harris, Harris out to Godden, Godden for the line, Marvin Golden for the line, great try for Marvin Golden, well worked, came from the set move, worked it all the way across the field, Marvin Golden collects the try, and it's uh, great to see that when you do put the simple passes in, play the simple balls, these things will come off. Yeah, Leeds have had the overlap on a number of occasions, but the man with the ball chosen to either turn back inside or look for the short drive. Again, discipline is the key. Woodness gave away a penalty on their own 30-metre line, and you can't do that at any level of football, never mind against Super League opposition. Um, but really now it's a question of uh, booking seats for semi-finals, I think. We'll not know till a bit later on who will face in that semi-final as Harris misses the kick. Not the greatest boot, uh, day with the boot for Yeshin, but there's been difficult kicks. But knowing his high standards, he'll expect to have got them all. And so now, witness know they must kick the ball back to the Rhinos. The last two kicks have resulted in tries. What will happen now? They have to keep this pressure going, Rhinos, right? to their own pride and their own sake of view. They have to keep going here and you know, put as many points as they can on the board. There's a big game. Next Friday night at Headingley when Wigan Warriors are coming. Wigan have only played a uh, one game since the Cubs defeat and that against a mediocre Hull side. Divici on for Hull as Rivet collects and he'll be looking to get a try now seeing as at least centre part of Golden has got one in the bag. Jackson feeds Newton. Newton drives it up, runs straight at Catalan. Looks to get the ball away but the tackle was well made. And now Big Bally Mack, he drives through and drives a massive hole in the witness defence. There's three men on him trying to drag him down. Bally Mack takes a quick look to see who they are. This is Lee Jackson scooting away from Dummy Harvey. He hasn't got the support though. And the tackle's eventually made. Terry Newton in the Dummy Half this time. No loss there. And now Ryan Sheridan misses Simfield and finds Harris. Harris out to Goddard. And Goddard to Sterling. Sterling should back his own base here, he jumps and turns and goes again and he's, is he put in touch? No, he just tackles short, Sterling should have backed his own base there, he had the line in front of him, said Sutherland came inside, Simfield out to Harris, Harris, oh tackled by Hansen, it looked like a high one and it was, no it wasn't turnover, a fair tackle, a big crunching tackle that sent Harris backwards and good defence from Witness. Yes, it's a massive hit from Hansen. But uh, before that, even brilliant full back play by Jim Salisbury. He's, he's having his best game so far for Witness also this season. He gave the outside, cut off the inside, and had the, the winger exactly where he wanted him. Managed to stop him, forcing his way over the line. Witness, I think, now just aiming to keep this score respectable. Also, they've made some substitutions. George. Man and Danny Myler uh, have gone off and uh, Jason Hunter and Fabian Di Vici have come on. Lee Hansen's also coming off and Terry Reid is coming on. Cantor on, quick tap. He's got nobody in support. He's got oh. penalty, he's just feeling the ball. I think he's given offside as well. I don't know if that was justified or not. But um, I think... Colin Whitfield doing maybe two things here. He knows that the game's lost. You know, a uh, realistic assessment here. Witness aren't going to come back to win this game. So possibly thinking ahead to the league game. At, uh, I mean, would you believe it? 
league game on Wednesday at Featherston away. What a test that's going to be for these players. Obviously saving some legs there. But I think also wants to give people like Terry Reid, Fabian De Vici, Jason Hunter, uh, give them a taste of the big time here at the Arthur Quest against Leeds. Steve Argent drives forward. 11 minutes left. Witness 16 points behind. Oh, the ball goes away. Can't afford to lose possession like that. I think, as Phil said earlier, the, the tries, he scored, Leeds scored three tries in 10 minutes. Two of those coming from uh, penalties given away by Witness. And now the Vikings lose possession in a good attacking position. But I think now Witness will just be aiming to keep the scoreline down and do themselves justice. Phil Carroll and Leroy River having a chat about the old days at Henley there. And uh, I'm sure that will all be forgotten afterwards in the bar. So, Mr. Presley making sure that uh, the back row stays bound down, a uh, rugby union style. Now Sheridan scooting away, Sheridan's found a half break, he finds Cummings, he's a full race now. Can Cummings make it to the line? Oh, what a, oh, what a wonderful tackle. Francis Cummings looks to have made it all the way. Now Jackson finds Sinfield. Sinfield tackles. Francis Cummings looks winded on the floor. That tap tackle was a saver for witness. Handy Hay back inside to Sinfield. Sinfield, is he going to get a hatchet, the young man? Sheridan, Sheridan looking for runners. He's just tackled short of the line. Francis Cummings still down in his haunches. Goes out wide. Past Golden and with it collects. Now Golden feeds it inside to Harris. Harris finds McDermott who's coming on the run around. McDermott powering towards the line. He's made it to the line. Try for Barry McDermott. The sheer strength of the player and the power of the Super League player tolls. And really the break from Ryan Sheridan. We go right back to that. We've seen it yesterday in yesterday's game from Flash Maloney for Cash. It's so important that you're very alive from that position at the base of a scrum. And not only that, but you've got to give credit to the men in support. And Francis Cummings playing at fullback, new lease of life today because he's seen a bit more of the ball. Made a great break, kept himself alive, flicked away a beautiful pass to keep the move going. Again, Sinfield at the heart of the matter, made sure that the move didn't break down. And a combination of pace from the back from Cummings and power from McDermott made sure that Leeds have scored in effect a 90 metre try in three plays. And uh, as the game winds down into its later stages, then some of the skills will be on display. Harris again has pushed the ball wide of the post. It's a day I want to forget with the boot. But all credit to Widners. They've played superbly in this game. It has been a good old-fashioned top tie. And, and certainly that will be the case from now on. It will be a case of finishing off. Finishing off well, but getting the job done for the Rhinos. There's only uh, a number of minutes remaining in the game. And Witness, I'm sure, will have heavy legs now. But they have played outstandingly well today. No one gave them a chance at the start of the game. They really gave Leeds a scare. And now the kickoff drops to Sheridan again. Sheridan finds Matthew. He drives it up straight at Phil Cantillon. A former Keithley and Wigan hooker. Now Golden. He drives it up. But he doesn't get very far. The two substitutes for Witness putting the work in. Fresh legs on the field. Miss moves to Sinfield again. Miss out to Golden. Golden finds Sterling. Sterling again comes back inside. He finds Harris. Harris finds McDermott. McDermott always alive. Since he's come back on the field, Byron McDermott has been so alive to the secondary phase of play. Now, Masella. Masella finds a gap. He's got Jackson inside him. He finds Sheridan. Jackson looking to get the ball away. He does to Harris. Harris, another miss move. Gordon, Gordon look, finds Hay. Hay again evident throughout this game. This is Harris. Harris looking for runners. Finds Matthew. So there's Michelle outside him. Michelle looking for an offload, but there's no one there apart from Jackson. Now Jackson feeds it out to Harris. Harris, oh, interception. He only has Barry McDermott to beat Manson. And it's Francis Cummings who's covered inside and still playing. And the knock on there. Oh, unfortunate for Witness there. The break was on, they just couldn't take the pass. Yeah, it was a good play by Manson. He knew he was never going to get there. Oh, it was good interception. James Blues 
the players supported him superbly and the thing players made the right decision there was four league players closing him down tried to get the ball out to Munro but Munro just couldn't hang on to it but you can't fault the effort of these boys oh no Gary it's 100% Sevinca absolutely brilliant again there by Manson um, see the, 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 the fans are all so behind me you can hear them cheering it's tremendous and I think witness now will just hope to keep them out 30 tens a respectable scoreline probably reflects the game Jackson feeds out to Rivet we just want to hear the man of the match and Rivet takes it up to the 30 minutes and Andy Hay selected as the man of the match his, his first try of the day and he has been evident throughout the field linking us in play and it has been important for the Rhinos in missing Adrian Morley and Anthony Fowler, the part he has had to play in the game. Sheridan feeds Hay. Hay, will he catch his man of the match performance? He will. <laughs> Mr. Presley looks to his touch studs. He's up with that pass. Andy Hay, as if he heard the PA announcement, celebrates for a try. And he has been evident throughout the moves. Always there, always available for the pass, Phil. That was a great indication there of perhaps the difference between Super League and Northern Ford Premiership. Witness an interception, had virtually the whole length of the pitch to pull something out of the bag, but just lacked that uh, belief and pace to make the, the chance tell. Leeds come back with an excess of six, some ruthless handling in keeping the ball alive, and Andy Hay threw a big hole, took, looked at the fullback, realised that he could take him on, had the measure of him, went to the line, dumped the ball down, his second try of the day, and uh, Leeds now in cruising mode at the end of the game. But full credit to Witness, they really have uh, held up the Northern Premiership end as Harris finally manages to put a kick over and uh, Leeds take command at 36-10 in the final few minutes. 36-10, probably a fair reflection of the game. The Rhinos pulling away towards the end. But certainly there's, uh, the witness players can feel no shame in that scoreline. They have played absolutely out of their skins today. Their defence has been outstanding and I'm sure that if they continue this work, throughout the season they will certainly be up there there or thereabouts in the Northern Ford Premiership so now Rhinos looks to go again Golden collects a wonderful take from Golden there takes it clean out of the air and he skips around makes it up to uh, 23 metres out from his own line now Jackson feeds Sinfield Sinfield the man on for a hat trick as is Andy Hay will one of them get a, take the match ball home tonight we shall well and see McDermott offloads out to Jackson the ball's gone forward there no, <laughs> again, referee Steve Presley seems very scared of his whistle and won't blow it unless he's absolutely sure. Well, he must be the only person uh, in the stadium who didn't see that knock-on. When without wishing to sound too biased, I think the witness fans are convinced that there were two forward passes in Andy Hayes' try, although you've got to be uh, fair to him, he has had a top game and it's nice for him to cap his Man of the Match award by scoring just as the announcement is made but the Vikings now still going with a hundred percent effort and that is good to see as well although things have obviously gone against them in the latter stages of this second half they're still determined to score and they're still playing now with as much fire enthusiasm and determination as they did in the first 10 minutes Davici long ball out Munro drops it again while Damian Munro not having the best of the last 10 minutes and Leeds went off and scored from his last mistake let's hope it's not the same now Rivet takes the initial ball up Jackson feeds Sterling who is going like a steam train but it's Sterling who collects the ball Sterling looking to go around the outside but there's no room there for him Spike Gollin at dummy half feeds Hay Hay takes it up over the 40 gets an offload out to Francis Cummings Francis Cummings out to Brad Gordon. It's a foot race now for Brad Gordon. He's going to pin his ear back. No, he comes back inside. And he's just tackled. Lee Jackson was there in support, but he couldn't get the ball away. Nice and safe for the Rhinos now. Jamie Matthew finds Harris. Harris has got Golden outside. And Willie go himself. He finds Rivet. Rivet for the corner. Leo Rivet scores. And again, symbol passes to hand across the field. And really... The Rhinos are taking control now. They've took the ball up to 40 points, but there's still plenty of work from the game, but it's good to see they are getting the points now, Phil. Yeah, it's a bit exhibition time now, and again, you can't make mistakes at any level of football and not be punished for them, and Damien Munro must be ruining a drop ball some 70 metres away from where the eventual try was scored, 
We were talking about man of the match contenders, and certainly Andy Hay has had a big game. For me, Brad Godden's probably been the most impressive league player. He's been so solid on defence, and again, two or three long-range breaks down the left-hand side, and that one again set up the try-scoring chance. He again stopped and weighed up the options. Salisbury made a great tackle on him, and uh, he just couldn't get the ball away for Jackson, but by then the Widnes defence was shot. Moved the ball wide, some orthodox handling, and Harris, again, pass selection, better than his kick selection, and Rivet scores the try to take it up to 40. Well, 40 points for Tennessee. And we are in the final moments of the game. Full of two witness fans making their way out. But the vast, vast majority are staying on. They'll salute their heroes. As well the Leeds fans who know that the Rhinos are heading back to the Silk Cup Challenge Cup final, semi-finals. A regular fixture in the Rhinos. Fixture calendar. They weren't there last year. They were the previous five seasons. And they're going back this year. 40 points to 10 the lead. A short kickoff from witness but Marvin Golden keeps his head and collects the ball eventually now Jackson feeds McDermott McDermott charging at the witness defensive line three props on the field now for the Rhinos McDermott Matthew and Michelle are on as Newton had gone off for Matthew Harris Harris looking for runners it's Hay no surprise there he's tackled just over the halfway line now Harris looks to go himself, he steps, comes inside, Godden looking for runners, Sterling, Scroop back inside, Sterling to Hay, Andy Hay for a hat-trick, underneath the post, man of the match, and a hat-trick, he must be a very lucky man today, and I'm sure the drinks will be on Andrew Hay tonight. Again, a great play from Harris and Godden, I think Harris has realised that every time he can put Godden in space, there's a gap there, again the witness defence, credit then with coming across in cover but it was just numbers Paul Sterling was the extra man and again great support play Andy Hay taking the ball looked round saw the defence was shot and uh, I can't remember the last time or if ever Andy Hay has scored a hat trick it's certainly his first for Leeds he'll be absolutely delighted and uh, it just proves that the press perhaps do know something and for witness it's uh, a shame that all the, all the hard work done in the game so far is uh, not really reflected on the scoreboard now I think that's the hard part to take. And anybody that's here has seen what an excellent performance Witness have put up and it's just been pure gut for them. But then when you look at the score on the teletext or you read it in the papers and the lovely newspapers, at the end of the day, the score is 46-10. And uh, that doesn't look good for the Vikings. And there it is, the final hooter. Well, Leeds go on into the semi-final of the Silk Cut Challenge Cup. Witness have got a tough job to do now and pick themselves up for next Wednesday's game against Featherston. But they've shown that they can be a power in the Northern Ford Premiership. If they play like that every week, then they'll be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. But Phil, for Leeds, they must now fancy the chances of going back to Wembley. Well, what will the draw with hold for the Rhinos? We'll know in a matter of an hour's time or so. Both teams congratulate themselves. A wonderful sight here at the ground. And it's also, you look around the ground and everyone's on their feet. It's one of them bizarre situations where everyone's a happy man today. Witness fans know that their team are putting a sterling performance. They haven't let themselves down. And the Rhinos fans know that after a dodgy start, the Rhinos have proved their class. And they're in, most importantly, the semi-final of the Challenge Cup. They're 80 minutes away from Wembley. And that's a great feeling, Bill. Yeah, I don't know if we've used up our cliche allocation today, but certainly Rugby League was the winner today. If you could have written the script, it was perfect for everybody. All the fans have got something to cheer about. Witness players and coaches can take so much out of this game. If they can learn from some of the things that uh, the Leeds Rhinos put on them, that will prepare them better for the Northern Ford Premiership. Leeds got as tough a workout as they've had in any of the games they've played this season. Take nothing from the scoreboard. Wigan made it difficult. St Helens were tough nuts to crack. But when it was 10 all here early in the second half, the game could have gone either way. And Witness deserve enormous credit for that. That said, some field. And those are the kind of people that can turn a game even at this early stage in their career. Applause for all the fans. Applause from all the players. It's been a great day for Rugby League. It certainly was a great day for Rugby League. For me, Phil Daly, from Phil Kaplan. A wonderful time. 40 points to 16. And the Rhinos are in the semi-final of the Challenge Cup.